my boys, we have reached 30,000 subscribers. And I want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. It means so much to me. I am now working on my 30,000 subscribers special. It will be the spiciest take, I guarantee you, of the events um, of the third anniversary tournament. I have some amazing footage and photos. Uh, some never before seen stories will be heard and showcased in this video. It's going to be a really nice 30th anniversary video. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. I've been putting some extra work in on it. Um, also, this is the first episode or it's the beta episode of the uh, Yugi cast or the Yugi podcast. The name and style of this video or this podcast series is in beta form right now. Um, this is the first attempt at a podcast, so I'm going to um, try a few different things in terms of recording and things like that. But right now, I am already reaching out to creators to create an episode two, three, four, five, and so on. Um, so if you are a Dual Links player, Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG player, or maybe even an anime-ish YouTuber or whatever, uh, I will be reaching out to you. And we'll be doing some podcast spicy conversations. Um, I would say this is definitely more of a style closer to Joe Rogan experience. It's very casual. So I think you guys will enjoy it. Um, so my boy Y007, we have a great conversation. Uh, we talk about life after high school. Uh, we talk about, you know, our first time ever encountering Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, our experiences with that. And we just talk about, you know, just thing, just, you know, everything, just, you know, growing up, being human, living life, playing Yu-Gi-Oh, all that good stuff. So we got some spicy adventures in this uh, podcast and uh, lots of interesting things. So go ahead, stick around, watch it all the way to the end. And uh, if you enjoyed it, go ahead and give me a like, leave me a comment. Let me know who you want to see next. Um, I'm looking at the boy. It's Brad HD. I want to connect with you. Hit me up, my boy. I'll stay up all night long so that I can reach you in the EU. So hit me up, my boy, because I'm trying to get you in on this podcast. <laughs> but uh, yes, so thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for 30,000 subscribers. And as always, keep it dank. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I got I got a lot figuring out to do i still gotta figure out like what career i want to go do still because i still haven't found out like a long-term career path that i want to do for myself yeah um yeah and then like for me to like yeah because like a couple goals that i have for 2020 is to get into a relationship with another uh, person because i've never um had like a boyfriend girlfriend relationship okay um never had that i got a girl's number last week but i'm not too sure if there's gonna be an opportunity to like hang out or whatever or if she's like interested in me so when i did ask for her number or whatever she seemed interested at the time but i'm not too sure i, yeah. I have like no clue with like the reading and stuff i'm so inexperienced with this but <laughs> there's that and then yeah just figuring out like what i want to do long term because yeah because i like i know for a fact you two ain't paying the bills right now I, yeah i understand that i can give you just you know i guess i can give you a like i guess you can kind of get a level up for me because i i guess i just went through this uh, a decade or so ago, I felt so old now, but, um, yeah. when I came out of high school, you know, I'm like, I'm the type, I'm a person that, uh, I went to college, but college wasn't for me. And, yeah. um, while I was there, uh, you know, I, I was taking basically like business administration and things like that, but it just wasn't, it, it didn't, it didn't interest me like I thought it would. And plus at the point where I was in my life, I had to kind of handle things on my own. So I didn't really have anyone to really fall back on. So I had to work um, like right off the bat. So that's kind of how college ended up taking a back seat. And then eventually um, I went from uh, fast food to retail. So I would say Kohl's, that's about where you are right now. And then from retail to sales and from sales to corporate HR. And um, honestly, I would say what you the best advice I can give you is to don't close your mind or close your door to any opportunity and always yeah. be looking for the next thing and don't be satisfied because 
I was never satisfied and it got me here eventually and where I am now, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. Like, like I, I know that like a lot of times I don't, I don't like upload a lot of videos and I talk about my life sometimes, but you know, I'm not, I'm no Jake Paul, but you know, I, I'm pretty good. You know, I'm like, you know, I, I got a decent job, you know, this YouTube thing is just all extra, but, um, I just, I just, I just really, you know, I'm at a point in my life where I know if I had to just put myself in a box or, or like some of my friends just put into my head, you know, this is all there is, you know, I don't have any other options. I don't have a degree, so I can't do X, you know, saying those type of things is only going to hold you back. And honestly, yeah, sure. when I talk about like Yu-Gi-Oh and I talk about being a rogue duelist and doing rogue style stuff, like that's how I live my life. Like I, I do things that make me happy do things that make me satisfied and when i worked at um taco bell oh my god i hate taco bell so much oh, I bet. and i <laughs> working at a fast food place fuck that yeah i i quit oh, like god. i worked there for five years but i quit every summer to work at a oh, random god. job somewhere else and that going to those random jobs just opened my eyes to you know, the, the, what I really, what the, this is when I really started to become successful in like business world. I realized that most people either have no idea what the fuck they're doing or they are just very knowledgeable in whatever it is that they're doing. And when I say knowledgeable, I mean, you're two Google searches away from getting their job. The people, there are people out there that are experts in master class level, big brain, 200 IQ people. There are, and there are big brain, 200 IQ jobs. Don't get me wrong. A doctor that went to school for like 14 years definitely should know what they're doing. But when I'm talking about like corporate people and the only thing that they're doing is running a tool, you know, using Excel, you know, talking to people, you know, that's what it really comes down to. Like the business world, corporate America, it all just comes down to handshakes, smiles, and using a computer. And if you can do those things, what you what you're lacking is the opportunity. And you know, I, I'm a technical recruiter, so I literally all I do is get people jobs all day. Um, yeah. So so like I got an understanding of that. But I I always tell my wife like once I understood how the sausage was made, I start doing a lot better in my career because I realize that you know everyone kind of holds people at these very high esteems because they have these senior level titles or they make two hundred thousand dollars a year but you find out that their job is just telling other people what to do and those other people all know how to do small tasks so in the end what does this person actually do they talk to people send emails and run applications you can do that too so the only reason why you wouldn't get that opportunity is because you couldn't sell yourself on paper. And then once you, and then if you sell yourself on paper, you couldn't sell yourself in person. And, and really no matter what the job is, if you can get a job and hold it for six months, you can get another one in that same field. So if you keep your mind open like that, you can get a job anywhere outside of, you know, being a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. Something where there is like a measurable, bar of you must have x to pass because even having a degree that's not even a measurable bar companies and institutions need people to come in and do the work at the end of the day they don't care about a degree but the gatekeepers care about degrees but millennials run the offices now and they don't care about degrees um, unless you look on their resume and their resume says harvard mit summa cum laude then they're gonna really care about it but most people don't have that shit. Most people just got a bachelor's and fucked off. Like, so yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, and they don't remember anything. Yeah. Cause like, I know for a fact, like, I do not want to like stay in retail or whatever. Like definitely like working at Kohl's for like my first like job outside of YouTube. Cause that's still technically like YouTube is my first job. So I've been doing this like during high school and shit. Yeah. And, like, uh, like a real world job you could say um would be Kohl's or whatever and it's like you know it's been chill or whatever but at the same time it's like i know for a fact it's not something i would want to do for x amount of years it just is just depressing thinking about like wanting to stay there and getting paid like pretty close to minimum wage and all that shit right yeah but so i definitely like don't want to stay in that rut another thing that yeah one thing i like really 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 need to improve on myself is like building self-confidence and being more um like you said, like open to stuff and whatnot and just push myself because the only person holding me back is me. 
Yeah. Like, there's no outside factor that's holding me back or whatever. It's what? you, me holding myself back. Technically, I held myself back by declining the offer to go to LA, even though I am underage and everything like that. Because I got that email at the beginning of January or whatever, and like at the bottom it said, you're under 21 years of, or if you're, you have to be 21 years or older to attend and stuff. And I think, it, I guess if I like really, really, really wanted to, I could have like figured out a way to like get there or whatever and just like say that I'm like 21 or whatever, but. <laughs> I still decline the offer at the end of the day and shit like that. So, yeah, I mean, well, honestly, you're already ahead of the curve because when you realize the only person in your way is you, then you know the path to success. It's the path that you have been avoiding this entire time. And that's something I've been struggling with a long time. It took me a long time to learn that lesson. But if you already know that, then you're already ahead of the curve. So, I mean, the only thing that's left is for you to sit down and make a plan and figure it out and then go out there because you, you just can't, it's all, it's honestly, it's just like Yu-Gi-Oh. Like I always talk to my wife and tell her how Yu-Gi-Oh has shaped and influenced and changed my entire life. Like I wouldn't even be here today talking to you if it wasn't for Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, I crazy. wouldn't be married. It I wouldn't be any so of that. Yeah, this shit works. It is so crazy how this shit works out. Yeah. I contribute a lot of like my YouTube success through your influence because I started, I guess, networking with other content creators when you made that YouTube Discord like two years ago or whatever. Like, oh, really? That's how that. Yeah, because of you making that YouTube Discord, that was the first time I've ever like joined a YouTuber Discord or whatever, and that was like the first time I was like active in something like that. Um, and that's yeah. how like I was able to like learn of other people. Like I think technically I met Brad through your Discord because he joined your YouTube Discord and stuff. And then, like, hmm. slowly but surely, like, um, there's, like, a section that one of your moderators made in that Discord for, like, sharing videos and stuff. And I yeah. was, like, and when I talked about my day-to-day -day or whatever, I talked a lot of, like, my mindset, especially two years ago, was, like, what video I'm going to make next and stuff. So I had a habit of, like, mentioning, like, that I'm going to make, like, a video later and stuff like that. Some people got a little annoyed of it, but some people were, like, hey, that's pretty chill. I'll go check out your channel and stuff like that. So yeah. The ball started rolling whenever I like joined your uh, YouTube Discord or whatever. So like that's why like I contribute a good amount of my YouTube success because of you, just from your influence alone, uh, which was like really cool. That's why I was like so cool that I like was able to meet like you, Brad, and so many other content creators in the community and stuff. It is, it is like when I really think about it, it's fucking crazy. Of like even though I'm still a channel with like almost 15k, there's still like a lot that I've done with the community and stuff like that, which is just crazy to think about. Yeah, man, it's like like real talk. The whole thing about um, this YouTube journey that I've been that I've been on, it has been really weird. Like I would have never even started YouTube in the beginning if I wasn't actually. I was honestly the honest answer. I was being real fucking hateful. I wanted to I wanted to start a YouTube channel because I was trying to I was going to the University of Phoenix. This is the most pettiest fucking story in the world. Okay. So I was going to University of Phoenix, and at the time there was this guy, and I don't know why this guy got under my skin or whatever. But at the time I was going to the school, and I'm, you know, I was going there. I was trying to improve myself, and I had already had my professional job and whatnot. But the reason why I was going to school is because I still had that notion in my mind that I needed a degree to be successful, and I didn't realize that I was already successful by most societal standards. But I wasn't able to see yeah. that because like like you were saying before, like, you know, being in your own way. That's where I was at. And okay. while I'm in school, you know, this guy, he I guess he thought he was like big shit in the school for some reason. I don't know. And I and for some reason in my mind, you know, I was being real petty because my job current at the time I was working at this bank and, and they were very petty. Like the corporate America environment was really petty. So it was really starting to affect me and my everyday thinking. And when I went to school and this guy, he was running to be president and I just ran to be president just to be an asshole to run against him because nobody else was running. And what happened was um, he beat me by a vote, um, but it wasn't because he was any more charismatic or anything like that. It was honestly pure luck. It was something like it was a, like a pitiful amount of votes, like 18 votes, like like 36 votes total. Like it was it was a very pitifully low number. It was embarrassing. But <laughs> what happens is the, um, the person that was running it, instead of just, you know, saying, OK, well, this is you know, this is it, Dan, you lost. Hold this LC later. Get the hell out of here. Um, they made me the vice president. And um, 
And the re only reason I started doing YouTube is because when someone put a camera on me, I started going humming, 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 and I started sweating. And, and, it, and it was crazy because I had never had that reaction to anything before. But it was something about looking at a camera lens, something about knowing that this moment of of me trying to trying to be something that I wasn't just I don't know it was gonna be there forever and it really put a sh it shocked me so I thought like I mean I was like if I'm gonna have any kind of life because for at, for a while I thought that I was gonna be I was thinking like man I'm gonna be some kind of public figure one day I don't know why I always had that in the back of my mind so I was like I can't be afraid of a camera so let me do some YouTube stuff and I went to toy Toys R Us and like I told you uh like like you said before, I'm staying in your own way. You know, I, I was afraid to get in front of a camera and I went and bought a puppet and I used this puppet and put the puppet in front of the camera. We talked about this yeah. Before. Yeah. I told you this story. Yeah. Story. I think I think I've heard the puppet part before. Yeah. yeah. And that's and that's what I'm saying. Like, I find like I did all that bullshit just to be petty. And then I did the puppet shit. And then I did the Pokemon battles. And then I did uh amiibo and then that took off randomly and it took off because i was using the the inside of the amiibo's packaging as a stand and i made a video and it got like a hundred thousand views or something crazy like that and i was like wow guess i'll make another amiibo video maybe i could be yeah, the next pewdiepie because because you know regardless of what people tell you when you get a video and it gets like more than 10 fucking views the first thing goes through your mind Oh my God, I'm about to be the next PewDiePie. I'm about to make YouTube millions and I'm about to go from rags to bitches right now. And you just think, you just think it's all, you just think you're about to be rich. But the reality is you don't know what the hell you're doing and you got lucky. You don't even know what you did. And, um, I, I still don't know what I did sometimes with the fucking content that I make. Like, I need to do a better job of, like, understanding the YouTube algorithm, but sometimes I'm just in that fuck you mentality. I'm just like, I'm just going to upload whatever the fuck but I'm But honestly, real talk, I, I'll tell you this. Trying to chase me after the YouTube algorithm is not the way to approach YouTube. And then also, when you, uh, like, I was in a bad mental state, I want to say, for the last four years, because I was really dealing with, like, family turmoil and my dad passing plus life stuff and we were having issues um with just everything and then on top of that all that you know Yu-Gi-Oh is my safe space Yu-Gi-Oh is the place where I go to just escape the world but Yu-Gi-Oh has become a part of this YouTube thing and YouTube was bringing me a lot of stress so in some ways yeah, I almost man, lost man. my safe space so I was kind of just kind of I was really messed up for a little while but what happened eventually I think it when I got to the point where I was just like you know I don't really care anymore I realized that you know it wasn't really about the YouTube for me uh per se it was more about the people and and when you tell me stuff like you know like it, it's really it's really weird like as I was reading that invite for the Konami thing um it was saying you know it's going to invite all the all the Yu-Gi-Oh celebrities and yeah. it, and it was so weird cuz I was thinking like I am not a celebrity but then again to other people I am a celebrity so I so it's like you know you can't take that away from other people's opinions I guess or whatever other people put on you I guess but in my mind, I guess I don't see myself like that. But I'm glad that when like like you or maybe like James or like Duel Links Best Decks and will say like, oh man, I was inspired by some content you made or or you or I really feel good because you left a comment on my channel or something like that, and it and I feel so good because you just came by and just you know left this comment and I don't know, I felt felt special. It's like to me, I'm just so happy that I could have. I could have been that for somebody else. And it's kind of yeah, weird. It is crazy to think about like how much influence you've had on the Duel Links community. I don't like, even. Of course, you're not. You're not like the number of like Duel Links meta, but it doesn't change the fact that you've impacted so many other content creators on this platform and stuff. It's and... just crazy to think about. Yeah. And I, you know, the funny thing about Yu Gi Oh! is like a lot of people always talk, like, not a lot of people. When you watch anime and stuff, they talk about the bonds and the friendship and all that BS. But when you, but, but, but real talk though, I'm experiencing that in my everyday life. And it is an amazing feeling to know that you have these, like, I was actually telling my wife the other day, like, to be invited to the Konami thing for them to send me something. It is, it is, it is 
is crazy. You it know, is absolutely crazy. Yeah, I even was, if dude, yeah, I was literally in shock when I got that email a month ago on uh, getting invited to like the party because I'm only a channel with like 15k at the end of the day. You don't see other YouTube channels with 15k getting fucking offers to get flown to like LA for a party or whatever. Like that's mind blowing. Oh, oh no. Well, you're gonna have to buy that on. You, you gotta buy your own plane ticket, my boy. <laughs> I, I did hear about that. Congrats, tell me about that. I oh, think, that was. I think, like, the big, big people. I think the big, big people are getting, uh, uh, getting the thing. Or like, oh, I, oh, I guys. bet. But, but the other guys, yeah, like I, us, would have to pay for it. I, I did hear about that from Brad. Uh, you know the channel Yu-Gi-Oh Everything? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything contacted, like, Brad, because Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything also got invited to the little party. Yeah. And so, um, Brad told Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything that I also got invited, and then I think Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything also mentioned that he did, like, reply to the email, and it was, like, talking about that, yeah, you gotta pay for your own play and stuff. Yeah, so. the great thing was, this is what I said, I, you know, because you gotta remember, I have a corporate background, so I might get on YouTube and be all... Bleh, 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 you know, act like a maniac and shit. But, you know, corporate Dan came out because now I'm dealing with this corporate firm. So I'm like, yep. ah, yes. So, you know, it's time for me to go do this thing. So, you know, I'm going to need a flight plan. I'm going to need this, this, and that. And he basically replied, was like, I can give you information about a hotel stay. And I said, ah, I see. So this is the type of business <laughs> we're doing here. Okay, well, let me see what the tickets are looking like. God damn it. <laughs> I'm like, well, I can't miss this. I'm going, damn it. So I bought the ticket. But uh, the tickets was very expensive. But honestly, it's oh, a, really? it's yeah. But real, for, but for for me, it was expensive because I'm living in New York now. So New York to California is ridiculous. But if this had been about a, a year or two ago, then it would have been Seattle to California. And it wouldn't have been that bad. Yeah. Okay. Having this conversation, I think... Is it's been real interesting, man. I kind of, I kind of think I want to maybe like edit some of these pieces up and like Joe Rogan experience it. Dude, hey, go ahead. I personally, from my end, I have not like clicked the recording button yet, but I've had OBS open for like the entire time. But hey, I am so down for this to get uploaded on YouTube or whatever if you're recording it. Oh, okay, cool. Perfectly okay with that. I, yeah, you, yeah. When it comes to like when we do finally like fucking record the draft pack or whatever, um. I'll send you like what I recorded and stuff and you can make the video literally however you want. All I need from you for the draft pack is just like your audio clip. And then for you, it's going to be different because mm. you actually have like a webcam and everything or like no, an actual camera to record shit. So mm. I'll probably want your like actual footage too. So I can do some cool little edits and shit when we okay. actually get the draft pack going. But like literally all the other people that I've like collaborated with, like they just don't do face cam for their content or whatever. So ah. uh, I, I had to like edit it a little different than how I imagined it. But... You know what though? I found out that um, my child being born is gonna be Generation Alpha, dude. That sounds fucking dope. Wait, I know. That actually, sounds like a sick ass name. I know. Generation was... Alpha. Right. Yo, you about to breed a fucking alpha male? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> he's he's still pooping. Crazy. Stop it. Uh, but yes, Generation Alpha. I was like, I was super shocked because I was, because I was thinking, I was like, I wonder what cool name they're gonna assign to uh to this generation. And I looked it up, and it's and it just started uh this year. I think twenty twenty is when the alphas are starting to be born. <laughs> the fucking alpha males are coming through. I can't wait for the alpha memes. How long do we have to wait for alpha memes? Like, how how old do you have to be to be meme creator eligible? Dude, I don't know, man. Yeah, because I, I was thinking, like, it should happen right away. But then again, like, fucking millennials and Gen Z kids are not, they don't give a shit about the new babies that are being born. Dude, you got to, like, yo, you got, when your kid's, like, they fucking age, when you do, like, let them get a fucking phone and shit or whatever, you got to be like, yo, you're a fucking alpha male. Make these memes. Get viral on the internet. <laughs> like, you got to, like, I'm going to need you to get viral on the internet right now. They're like, dad, we Lauren don't even. Alpha male. They're like, dad, we don't even internet no more. Internet's the old thing. What, what are you talking about? Like. Like, we only psychic neck now on it all. Oh. <laughs> like, yeah, what the dude, fuck I'm is still, that? I'm still, I'm still a young kid, and I hate the idea of, like, fucking growing older and stuff like that and the shit that I'm used to. <laughs> Not going to be the same or whatever. Uh, well, I mean, I'm already... I mean, the crazy thing was, it's like, some things... Like, I see... Like, I see how people get phased out of, on technology. 
and then they end up being a fucking boomer and just just don't get shit at the modern age. I see how it happens because on something as, as simple as buying that ticket um, the other day, I went to go buy the ticket and there's so many options and there's so many shenanigans and so many scams and so much shit going on because I never buy tickets because my wife always buys tickets. She's been buying tickets for 10 years and I have never bought a ticket on my own for anything to get on a plane. Yeah. And when I tried to do it myself, I actually fucked up and like bought a ticket. But what happens is I paid for a ticket through this. It's like a, it's this weird thing, right? So you can buy a ticket for a window of time and get a 50% discount on the ticket. But there's no guarantee on the times when you leave and when you return. And I thought just because I put in, I want to return on Sunday it will bring me back on Sunday because that's coming. I mean, why would it be different? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I said. But this flight set me up with a fucking 10 hour layover. It set me up with a uh, return on at, it was like, yeah, you'll be on the plane. Uh, yeah, you'll be on the plane Sunday, but you won't get back till Monday afternoon. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, this only that defeats the whole purpose. And it and it did it like right after I purchased it. And the crazy thing about it is, after you buy the ticket, right, you can't change any part of it because you didn't buy the ticket directly through the airline. You bought it through like an aggregator website. So because like a third party. You, yeah, so you bought it through a third party. So if you buy it through a third party. You have to go through the third party to change it. And the third party's like, we don't do changes. Basically, fuck you. And I was like, I was like, oh. <laughs> so I was like, well, uh, so basically what happened is they refunded. They charged me $14 and they told me I can go out and find another ticket on my own. And I said, well, can't you help me online since you are on the phone right now? Your customer service looking at the system right now. Don't you have access to all the flights and all the plans and all the prices right now? Yes, but I can't do sales. Click. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just sitting there like, bruh, like really, but like that's how they do me. You got fucking like, scammed. Like, so, so basically, I had to refund that ticket, and then I went back, and um, I was going through the process again, and I kept basically hitting F5, and the ticket that I've been waiting for just emerged from the shadows. And it was at that right price, but it was still expensive as hell. But it was still at that right price. It wasn't fifteen hundred dollars, which is what they was trying to sell you, boy. And I was like, fifteen hundred dollars, man. I'm gonna pray for y'all at that party. I'm like, I ain't going. <laughs> like, I can't. Dude, that's literally me. <laughs> I'm gonna be so fucking heartbroken when like the party actually happens. I'm like, could have been me. Could've yeah, been fucking me. <laughs> like that's and you know what's you know what though? I ain't gonna lie, man. When I last, okay, so this is the some real talk. A lot of people, since this is going to be all Joe Rogan experience style, last year, everybody was like, where is Dan at all these content creator events? Why isn't yeah, Dan there? And I was asking myself that too. I was thinking, well, have I been shunned? Is it because... I don't know. Is it because of any reason that I don't know right now? I mean, are, am I being honestly how I felt? I felt like Konami was doing me the same way YouTube was doing me, just being indifferent. And I yeah. just and and being an indifference is the ultimate killer on the YouTube platform. You know, if if no one reacts to your content, they don't you know watch it for a long period of time they don't hit like they don't hit subscribe they don't leave a comment they don't interact they don't even open up and look at the details and read the description youtube's like oh man this is invaluable so they just throw it away and i figured that's what happened to me too but what i found out was youtube changed from internal um pr to third party pr and the third party pr was reaching out to me and it was just getting Wait, clapped by the Konami spam. YouTube? You said YouTube. Oh, you oh, I said, Konami. yeah, I meant okay. Konami. Yeah, I meant Konami. Yeah, okay. I said YouTube. I mixed it up. But Konami has, uh, switched to a third-party PR uh, team, and they have best been getting sent to spam. They they have been emailing me. And I just – Oh, wait. Yeah. Oh, wait. So you've been getting offers, but it was sent to spam? Yeah. Wow. So this oh, time wow. – Yeah. So just so happens, just so happens, crazy thing, I was – looking at my email and I was cleaning it up and I looked at my spam and I had an invite to go to a Yu-Gi-Oh party next week. <laughs> like, <laughs> so 
I'm Wait, like, what? So that means you probably, you probably got an email for that uh, Jumbo Dark Magician card. I too, did, huh? and I was very yeah. sad. I, yeah, because that's why I was confused on uh, why you, because like if I got it, I was genuinely surprised on why you didn't have like a whole thing for it too. Yeah, and I mean, real talk though, I mean, I, I had that thought did go through my head, but at the time, I just was like, you know, if they chose to give it to you over me or any other content creator over me, I was happy that you were able to get that. And if, if my time had passed, my time had just passed. I'm glad that they're interacting with the community. Yu-Gi-Oh is so special to me. Like even having my time in the sun two years ago was enough to last me a lifetime. Like it, like Yu-Gi-Oh really has changed every aspect of my life, especially you know, with like every person that's in my life right now, like I'm 32 years old this year. Oh well, no, 33 this year. Every person that's important to me in my life is connected to Yu-Gi-Oh. My wife's connected to Yu-Gi-Oh. I wouldn't have never met her if I didn't play Yu-Gi-Oh. And it's not because she plays Yu-Gi-Oh. It's because the community that I played Yu-Gi-Oh with connected me to her. I would have never met her otherwise. And my best friend, I met him through Yu-Gi-Oh while I was skipping high school to play Yu-Gi-Oh in the public library in Detroit. I know that sounds so crazy, but I used to skip high school. I I skipped. Now, here's some real shit that nobody knows about me. I guess the internet's going to know this. I skipped all of 10th grade. I didn't go to school for a day. I Damn. skipped and I didn't. And, and, and why did I do it? I just was so addicted to just going to play Yu-Gi-Oh and it was having so much fun. And it, I was just really enjoying myself. And it also felt like I was like rebelling against the system too, because I was like, you know, no one knows I'm doing this and I'm having so much fun and it's not even wrong. Like I'm not doing no drugs or doing nothing crazy, but I'm just having fun with my friends and I'm not getting into trouble. I'm like, this is awesome. But this is what snapped me back. This is what, this is what brought me back to reality. I was, in 11th grade no i was in um yeah i was in 11th grade and i had 10th grade credits and they posted the high school graduates and they were like these are all the people that are going to graduate this year and my name was not on the list and i was so embarrassed by that and it, and it was and it scared me because i was like i'm not i was like i was like if i don't get my shit together i'm not gonna have a fucking future so basically i still play Yu-Gi-Oh every day and i still skipped every now and again but what i did was i put hours at the front of my schedule and at the end of my schedule and then i used working at taco bell as a i forget what they called it back then but it basically it was like a work study kind of thing so i got I credits for that like that at my high school where like if you're like working or whatever you can get what high school credits or something like that yeah and when i got on yeah. when i and when i got put up on game that i wasn't going to graduate in time i told all my friends that was doing the same shit doing the same dumb shit with me like none of us was thinking we just fucking around i don't know why it's just we're just enjoying ourselves and then living in the moment yeah That's let's living in the moment living and i moment. was like bro we got to get our shit together and i was i think i was the only one that got my shit together I was the only one that graduated on time. Everybody else had to take a summer class, but I graduated on time. I had my high school diploma and I was like, well, now what? <laughs> Just like you. I'm like, now what? I guess I can play some more yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> I was a fucking good noodle or whatever. So like I do, I have never like skipped class or whatever. Ooh. Um, yeah, I never skipped class. And the funny part too, actually, this is a funny story, like a little, it's still related to high school or whatever, but it was a funny story. So yeah, I never like skipped class or whatever. The only times I was late was just kind of sleep in or whatever, because I'm not a morning person, right? Um, but like, yeah, throughout the entirety of junior year and throughout the entirety of senior year, I, I never skipped class except to like the very, or not skipped class, but I never skipped class and I was like never late to like any of my classes. I had perfect attendance. Nobody fucking told me that I had a reward for perfect attendance. So, you know, <laughs> like at the end of the year, they tell all these people to go in the, so from like, how my high school is set up, they like tell everybody beforehand and then all the special kids that get rewards and shit are in the center of the gymnasium and then everybody else sits in the bleachers, right? 
for two years in a row, nobody told me I got perfect attendance because I was <laughs> technically like late on some of these days or whatever. So my dumb ass is sitting in the like bleachers and shit. And they call out my full name. I'm like, shit. Looks like I gotta walk down and get my damn reward real quick. Oh my god. And the worst part too, in my senior year, I actually got two rewards. I got one reward for perfect attendance, and I got the other reward for um taking four years of everything i took four years of social studies math science all that shit and i had like a b average um and then so due to that i got that was like my second reward so they called me down twice for that i got my perfect attendance reward went back to the bleachers and then they <laughs> called me down again for my uh, other reward i was like are you joking me nobody told me <laughs> that i got these rewards literally i'm going through all the fucking bleachers, bro going all the way down <laughs> to get my damn rewards or whatever and i just went back over there i was genuinely surprised i got two rewards too i didn't even know what they were getting rewards for four years of everything bro like bro. i'm not even that smart of a kid like i always had to like stay after school and stuff too like that's why i didn't feel like i um i guess deserved the rewards in a sense because like I always had to stay after class to like get my grades up. I was never a type of person that could like memorize the information right away and be able to like pass the test right away. Like I still had to like bust my ass to like get that B average, get that like 3.0 GPA. But I, I pulled through. I pulled through while doing it with YouTube and stuff like that. Which well, was pretty sick. Well, that's what's up. Cause I mean, honestly, you know, you did all that with YouTube on your mind. I mean that that is an accomplishment. Dude, I, I couldn't imagine going to YouTube. YouTube so much more than like in my senior year, especially, bro. I prioritized YouTube so much more than high school. Like, <laughs> it, it, like my grades were never like abysmal at all. Like I never had like D's and F's all the time. But my parents were still a little hassling me when I got like some C's and uh, D's. Bro, my mom was like, "Nah, you can't have that." Yeah, you I'm can't okay have with B's, bro. I'm okay with B's. We can't have them C's and D's. So like, I I, I was just a good noodle and stuff. Um, I didn't explain this in the story or whatever, but literally a week before the reward ceremony, right? That's when I like woke up late one day and like missed two of my classes. So that was like counted against my perfect attendance. I'm going to assume the reason why I still got the perfect attendance rewards because they already have like all the medals and pieces of paper printed out for the event anyways. So in advance. So due to that, like that's why I still got the rewards. So that was like one of the reasons why I didn't think I got the rewards for both my junior year and senior year for perfect <laughs> attendance because I was literally like late, like a week or two before the actual reward ceremony happened. I was like, shit, I, I woke up late, my bad. They're so like, yeah, like, we already printed it. Why. I was like, I'm, that's why I'm like, I'm saying the bleachers, bro. I ain't got no rewards. <laughs> All right, now, God. now I'm gonna have to tell you my bad apple story. Now this is crazy. This goes with that. Ten, this goes with that tenth grade skipping. So. Of course, I was, I was skipping, and I mean, like, what what are you saying? I got neglectful parents out here. Don't nobody care about your boy? Don't nobody care about your grades? Didn't did nobody check? They did check, but I was clever. Now, you think about this. You're smart enough to do this stupid shit, but you're not smart enough to go to class. So this is what happened. I get my report card, but basically, I was getting C's and D's, and then I did get a couple F's because I just straight up didn't do certain work. Like... They were like, yeah, we're going to make you write a 15-page essay about whatever. I'm like, get out of here. Ring of Fuck Destruction that. just got eroded. I need to master the Ring of Destruction. I need to figure out this uh, new uh, scapegoat meta. I don't have any time for this, all right? And um, <laughs> be the next key of game. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like listen I listen here teacher one day I'm going to be a YouTube star and I'm going to make speed dual content and you'll see she look that see. like what are you talking about what the fuck is a YouTube I'm like, you'll see but um what happened was I had I was like I told you I would go to public library to play Yu-Gi-Oh so I went to the public library I took my fucked up report card and um I took I made a bunch of photocopies of it and I took my name so you know it's all made in the same font so I took my name and I cut out A's and B's from my name. And um, I took a piece of clear tape, okay? Now, now, now this is about to be ridiculous right here. I took the piece of clear tape and I placed the letters in the correct spaces and then I put them over the grades. So I didn't give myself like all A's cause you know, your boy wasn't racking all A's you know, from the get go. So that would have been suspicious, but I put it together in a way that it, you know, it was pretty good. You know, I was like a 3.0, 2.8 kind of guy. So I would, so I brought home the 3.0 and the 3.0, uh, had, you know, B's and A's or whatever. And I calculated like the correct numbers. Like I forget how you do it, but back then I calculated the correct number so that the grade point average would match the letter grade. And after I made the copy, 
um, I made the copies until the lines from the tape disappeared uh, because every time I would make a copy, you know, it would degrade a little bit. So I bring home this black and white copy of my report card and I was going to Detroit Public Schools at the time. Detroit Public Schools was always on some dumb shit. Like, seriously. Like, they were like, we don't have any paper, so we can't print report cards. So if your parents want to know the grades, you got to come to the fucking school. And the parents didn't fucking come to school. So yeah. it was like dumb stuff like that. So when I got home, I told my mom, like, yeah, so they had to print my uh, report card out because, you know, they had some kind of error and they couldn't mail them out or something. And that was totally believable because Detroit Public Schools were always fucking up. And then I got away with that. But when I saw my name was not on that fucking board, I realized how dumb that shit was. And how I should have just went to fucking class. Like, I was like, but then I was I was lucky enough to have that job and all that shit. And then I cleared it up. But yeah, I did that report card shit. That was so fucking dumb. And then other people realized I was like, doing that. And I used to charge them $5 and I would do it for them. And I was using that money for Yu-Gi-Oh! packs. You got a little bit of awesome. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I had to do whatever I could to get them packs, man. Like no, like oh, I'm yeah. like Don Zalug was like thirty two dollars and like thirty two dollars back then was a lot of money, bro. Like especially for me in high school days, like you know how hard I got to work for thirty two dollars. I was making five twenty five an hour at Taco Bell, Damn. five twenty five, bruh. That's bruh. That's barely a pack, and that's a, and that's and that's, and that's not yeah, even a still far to four dollars back. Day, right? it, it, well, it was five dollars if you went to the mall or Target, so I couldn't even afford it if I went there. <laughs> I had to get the, I had to get the pack from the gas station. <laughs> yeah, dude, I forgot because like in South Dakota, the packs have always been like four bucks or whatever, three four bucks. Growing up, I forgot. I remember like one time. Um, I forgot what the reason why, but my mom like went down to um. Oh yeah, so my mom, her like field of work over the past few years is like being like helpful to people that have had bad things in their life and stuff like that specifically like oh, like a counselor um a, a little it's very hard to explain because i don't ask my mom enough questions about it um it's a lot easier to explain GameStop, anyways compared to, like, <laughs> my mom does. um and besides my mom's not even doing this um anymore but what she does is that she like um helps like i think like fundraising and stuff like that and like real stuff related to like um like rape victims and just that sort of like field for like people and stuff damn um, yeah I, I have i have a hard time explaining it or whatever because like my of course because my mom also um had a lot of different jobs when we like moved over uh when we moved out of town and stuff like that too so um, i mean she's actually putting it, in it's, that it's good all, work it's all related in the same field but it's like always like something different um in between yeah. jobs and stuff but yeah it's like related to that because i know when we like lived back in rapid city um in south dakota my mom uh was part of this um like shelter for those people and stuff back in rapid city so whenever there was like great victims of the police would um, bring them over and then like they had like a shelter to stay and then my mom would like help out uh from there and i know when we moved or whatever then it was more like kind of like crowdfunding and stuff like that um for uh yeah just crowdfunding for related stuff um hmm. to these victims and everything like that so she got like flown down to uh like florida or whatever to like have like a little like speech and stuff along with like her other co-workers and stuff so she was like um and this was like what was it? Is it Disneyland or Disney World in Florida? Do you remember? I never, I never, I never went. I never been there either. At all. My mom goes. I never been to fucking that. My mom was at Disneyland or whatever. She's like, yeah, let me go. Um, and just in the Florida area, she's like, yeah, let me go get like all the kids some stuff. So my mom got me a couple like Pokemon packs and shit. And look at these Pokemon packs or whatever. You know, like how Pokemon packs are nowadays. They have like that whole like uh, piece of paper like thing around it, and then oh, you have yeah. to open up the piece of paper thing to go into the pack itself. They oh, yeah, the blister. Pokemon packs didn't even had like the paper shit wrapped around it to advertise the. <laughs> pack but it was still like this was like a couple years ago too so it was they, they that's the system that they were doing and these fucking packs were like seven bucks a piece of like shit go to my fucking car and get them for four. and you know what i would not be surprised that these uh people were smart enough to fucking wait the packs too because i got dog shit in the two packs oh oh, oh yeah they were doing that back then <laughs> weighing out these series one series two packs and i was looking like what are they doing like i i had no idea what people were doing Cause you know, I just wasn't up on game that, that the cards were actually worth money. I just was like, Oh, cool. Anime cards. I didn't even call it anime. I was a like, cool cartoon cards. Like I just, Hell you yeah. know, I didn't even know it, but like the crazy thing though, like, do you remember the first time you ever bought Yu-Gi-Oh cards? Like, do you remember that? 
Um, for me, the yeah. how I got intro into Yu Gi Oh was that I watched Yu Gi Oh Five Ds when it aired. Oh, okay, on okay, so Five Ds. I never watched Yu Gi Oh or GX, and then so from there. Um, I watched the Yu-Gi-Oh uh, 5Ds, and I was like, yo, Yu-Gi-Oh is pretty cool. So then when my birthday rolled around, oh, yeah, fun fact. Uh, <laughs> me and my dad have the exact same birthday. We both wow. were born on the same day, just different year. So what That's we amazing. used to do is that he used to just, like, bring me to, like, Target, Kmart when I was still around, just places like that. And we would just go to these places and, um, yeah, Toys R Us, too. And we would go peace. to these places, and he was like, yeah, rest in peace indeed. Yo, dude, that's what I, I'm only 18 years old. I Rip Jeffrey. Yeah, Jeffrey, Toys no. Down around the world. But yeah, we'd go to like Toys R Us and shit, and we would, um, my dad would have like a certain budget, and I would just be like, yeah, I want this and this, and then he would get them for me. So when I was at the time, I was like, yo, Yu-Gi-Oh is pretty cool. Yu-Gi-Oh fighting is really cool. I finally want to get my own Yu-Gi-Oh card. So me and my dad went to Toys R Us, and I got the Yu-Gi-Oh Five Ds Warrior Strike Structure Deck with the Gemini. Hey, shit. Hey, the oh, that's why you. That's why Gemini is your shit. Yep. Oh, yep, the, the the legendary why, origin Gemini's, story. Yeah, that's why Gemini's are my favorite, and that's why um, Phoenix Gear is see. my favorite card of all I time. I see. Okay. And I, see. I think I probably got a couple packs, but it was pretty much those two structure decks because those were like the things that like I saw appealing, and I was like a deck and stuff. Um, so that's how I got into Yu-Gi-Oh. I would collect a little bit of cards. I had a very, very limited amount of cards as a kid, and then I would play the video games. I love the Yu-Gi-Oh games to death because that's oh, yes. how I like actually learned how to play the game, and that's how I was able to build yes. my decks and stuff. My experience with growing up with Yu-Gi-Oh was never like the going to the local like um, tournaments or playing with friends because while I had a really core group of friends growing up through elementary and middle school, they never really were interested in Yu-Gi-Oh. They knew about it, but they were never like, yeah, let's go play Yu-Gi-Oh. So I never had that experience of like growing up with people and playing Yu-Gi-Oh. So Yu-Gi-Oh is always like a thing that I just kind of kept to myself. I just played the video games and then I just like just built my own decks in my own time and just like very, very occasionally play Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff like that. But yeah, my yes. first experience with like packs and stuff, like, yeah, because I remember too, I would like save up a couple of dollars and always get like one pack or whatever. I remember that um, <laughs> I would be like with my grandpa. And you were free stuff. to play. Dude, I was free to play, bro. Back in the day, I was free to play. No, sometimes, because um, Yu-Gi-Oh's been doing this for years. They always do these, like, um, where you buy one pack and it's five cards, but all of them are foils and shit. As oh, kid, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, as a kid, I would always save up my dollars for those ones. I'm like, shit, <laughs> these are foils. They must be fucking good. So I would always, like, save Why up would they waste the foil? <laughs> yeah, they're always, like, holographic and shit. They came with, like, synchro monsters and stuff. And since I grew up watching Yu-Gi-Oh, it's like, oh, my God, these packs come with synchro monsters and shit. It's fucking time. Um, yes. So that that was like that was like my core experience of like opening up packs and stuff. I was a free to play player. Like I had a limited amount of stuff, and since I like wasn't hardcore into the game, I also had like other hobbies too and stuff like that. Okay. Um, yeah, because I, I had a way bigger Pokemon card collection than Yu-Gi-Oh. When I was a yeah. kid growing up, I always swapped between Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. There would be months where I'm like, fuck yeah, Pokemon's the only thing I give a shit about. I'm going to get Pokemon cards, games, everything for like three to six months. And then I would just completely 180 and go at Yu-Gi-Oh. That's, oh, okay. That's low key. That's low key happens to my channel too. Cause I started off like doing Pokemon Let's Plays, and then those yes. did like whatever. But then when I started doing Yu-Gi-Oh content, they started getting traction. So that's why I kind of stuck with Yu-Gi-Oh. And thanks to YouTube, like no matter what, even if I wasn't a YouTuber, I yeah. know for a fact I would still go through these phases of like Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon all the time without a doubt. Yeah. But if it wasn't for my YouTube channel, I wouldn't appreciate Yu-Gi-Oh as much as I do now. Oh yeah, that that makes that makes a lot of sense, man. I'm glad you tell me that story. Cause uh, that's really cool, man. I really love Yu-Gi-Oh origin stories. I, like, I, I'm very passionate about Yu-Gi-Oh. I've said this a million times, but I love hearing other people's like intro to Yu-Gi-Oh story because it's it's always different, and it's like always <laughs> it's always interesting. Like, you know, you never really know like how you get introduced to the game. Like, somebody will show you. You might see it on TV. They saw the anime. Uh, you found a card on the ground and was like, Dude. "What is this?" Like. Yeah. Like, cause the crazy thing for me was like, I, like how I got into Yu-Gi-Oh! Like I was around like when the, during the inception, right? So I think you were talking about 5D. I think 5Ds was 2005, I think. Uh, um, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, no, I might or, have been actually. Or was it 10? No, no, that was GX. 2005 was GX. Yu-Gi-Oh! Okay. 5Ds was probably 2009. Because oh, it's done I was now. like okay. ten years old or whatever. Yeah, I yeah. was like I wasn't like close to ten years old when I started watching Yu Gi Oh Five Ds, and I was born two thousand one. So it, okay. it, I think Yu Gi Oh Five Ds probably aired somewhere around two thousand nine, if I remember correctly. Yeah, because you know what? I remember around that time I wasn't up on like internet culture like I am now, 
And yeah. I didn't know that like it was a meme basically about card games and motorcycles. I didn't know. Dude, yeah. But my friends and I, we were just always all the time. We were like roasting the shit out of five D's because all we had saw was the previews. And we were like, man, how are they going to be playing this shit on motorcycles? I don't even watch the anime anymore. I oh, just play the card games. That, that shit but no, but bro, I, but, but see, but I was the one that saw the light. Like I didn't, like I was clowning it too. But one day I said, I'm going to give it a shot. And I watched like the first, um, uh, j- like the Japanese original episode. I watched the first yeah. episode and it blew my fucking mind. I just had no way. I had no idea that they could make a Yu-Gi-Oh uh series or Yu-Gi-Oh arcs that was just so amazing and plus synchro summoning to me at the time was like one of the the coolest things synchro ever summoning is like my favorite mechanic to this like game. like synchro like summoning. honestly when you when you start like me I I start out unga bunga Yu-Gi-Oh and literally going to synchro summoning like I guess as somebody who was in it as deep as me I literally I was feeling the energy I was like this is a new power the game you has that changed. Literally was Oonga Boonga. Like yeah. you back in that show was literally Oonga Boonga. <laughs> yes. It was crazy, man. And I remember that. And it just and I remember just talking about this shit. I mean, it had to be 2009, 2010, because I remember not having a girlfriend at that time. And I was spending a lot of time playing Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> and, and I wasn't trying to get a girlfriend either because it was just me playing Yu-Gi-Oh all day long. And I just was like enjoying everything because at, at 2009, th- and that was for me, I graduated high school in 2005. By 2009, I felt like I had a hold on life and I kind of knew what to do. And I had things like going in order, like, you know, I had my job and bills are paid and stuff like that. So my life had a little rhythm to it. So I was just freely enjoying everyday Yu-Gi-Oh. And that was just so much fun for me afterwards. And didn't I didn't have to feel guilty because, you know, I didn't have to worry about, you know, not graduating high school. But when I first found Yu-Gi-Oh, I was like watching TV one day. And I think I was watching Jackie Chan Adventures, I think. And um, I don't know if you remember that show. See, and I'm I, trying, I think I, I think I have seen like the intro for it and shit. Like, yeah, I, like, I browse, like, meme, yeah, no, because I browse through like meme apps and shit, and like some people like <laughs> post like these nostalgic posts on like shows they like. So yeah, I know what you're talking about. And I think I probably have watched like an episode of that as a kid, but I wouldn't remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you had, you would have probably been, you would have been like, you would have been like a child, child, like, like really young back then. Yeah, for, like the year two thousand. Like, like yeah, you would have been really young. Yeah, it probably was on in the background. But uh, what happens is there's this commercial, at which I have found the source material. I, I have the videotape in my house, and I'm trying to find a uh, VCR combo to basically basically make it digital so I can actually show people what I saw. But there's a promo of, like, Yami Yugi, and there was, like, the sea and a sunset. And he was just standing there, like his face was like a silhouette in the background, and it was all majestic, and it just was no sound, just like 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 ambient noises, and it just said Yu Gi Oh. Next week, eleven thirty. I was like eleven thirty. That's the prime time slot. That's the last. I was like on the cartoon lineup. That's a sacred spot. They about to kick Cubics out? Okay, let me see what the let me see what the fuck they about to Dude, do. I this miss Yu-Gi-Oh. Saturday morning cartoons. Bro. Saturday morning cartoons shit. with this shit. Like, like Dude, you can't that. you can't get that you can't get that back. You can't like like the way that yeah. the way no, that I was, was the, the ritual. Generation. I think I was the last generation. Yes, for that. you get up that you get up. You got that bowl of cereal, that box that seems to be infinite, and you're sitting in front of the TV just smashing <laughs> cereal to, all day. Time. I used to keep track of time watching Saturday morning cartoons. Yes. I was like, yeah, these are only like 20, 30 minutes long. Yo, yes. I ain't getting out of my room. That's how I'm going to keep track of time for yes. the entire day. And dude, back in the day, think about it like this. Back in the day, we had no DVR. I used to play video games during commercial breaks and pause the game while the show was on. Damn. Like, yeah. it's like and that stuff you just don't do anymore because – there's no need to because you know you can yeah, watch really anything isn't. whenever you want yeah, now like all the forms of media nowadays you can always like download it watch it yeah. at any point you want it is insane yeah. like yes it's more convenient and there's a reason why it is like that nowadays yeah but you gotta feel that nostalgia towards the fucking saturday yes. morning cartoons man yes Here, the thing for me though the saturday morning cartoons because when i was watching like cartoon network and stuff as a kid because i was a cartoon network kid the entire time yeah that's when they were like 
buying the rights to dub anime like they were oh yeah yeah, yeah. Cartoons. that's when they were just buying a fuck ton of anime yeah and just dubbing it themselves so i was watching pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh, bakugan beyblade power rangers an kid before i even knew that that was called anime like i thought right it was cartoons too. yeah and that's it yeah that was my same thing too i just really thought they were just cartoons and i just was like whatever like i just loved it and what happens is this this it comes on man and I and I saw that legendary first episode. Now I don't care what Yu-Gi-Oh does. I don't care what it turns into. I don't care if it's five Ds, ten Ds, little Ds. <laughs> you can never match that first episode because it was so over the fucking top. Think about it, man. You just watching these yeah, kids in yeah, school, dude, just original. like you, playing a random card game. And then out of nowhere, there's a rich kid sitting in the class just casually reading a fucking book while everybody's doing something, just being an asshole. But he overhears that this kid grandfather has a rare card. He's like, rare card? Let me see what the fuck he's talking about. He shows up and he's like, oh, that's the blue eyes white dragon. It's the, the rarest, most premium card of all time. And me, I'm watching it. I'm so invested. I'm a holy shit. It is the rarest card, but I don't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh. But I'm, but I'm so invested in this now. Like, what's going to happen now with this rare card? Then he's like, give me that blue eyes white dragon and I'll give you all of these. I have never heard a man say all of these. Like, it was crazy. Give me that blue eyes white dragon and I will give you all of these. Flips open a briefcase full of cards. I'm like, oh my God, he's got to make the trade. He's got to do it. That's a good trade. Now, how am I talking about that's a good trade? How the fuck I know? It's the first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! It could be. It's but it's the like first episode! How do I know? Yeah. I don't even know the yeah. game! That's like me walking in a, in a store, People, everybody's playing Magic. I'm like, that's a bad play, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Like, yeah, yeah, you made a misplay, bro. You made a fucking misplay. It's like, yeah, you fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, why your monster in defense position, bro? <laughs> yeah, why your monster in defense right now? You need to change it to attack position. Like, wait, you can't just attack with all those monsters multiple times. What are you talking Flying? What's that? Like, you know. What the fuck is <laughs> So, I'm hyped. <laughs> why are you care about attack? <laughs> like, land? Why can't I play my monster? What what kind of game will just let you summon monsters for free? Are you, are you a maniac? Are you insane? You want this game to last more than two turns? What are you talking about? But <laughs> so what happens is after that, you know, Kaiba, of course, he goes through the whole rigmarole. He gets him over there. Now, what I think is insane about this episode, man, what I think is crazy about this episode, Kaiba assaulted. He beat an old man. Uh, I don't care. The dub, the dub censors it and like throws it like to the yeah. side. But yeah, if you really yeah. think about it, yeah, he, he, he beat him up. Grandpa. Like, like think about it. Like Yugi and Kaiba was both standing on that platform. The only reason Kaiba actually fell over is because he got hit with a fucking mystical mind crush. He got hit with supernatural powers. Okay. Kaiba don't got supernatural powers. So how did grandpa end up disabled on the ground? Somebody put him there. So you mean to tell me he beat his ass for a blue eyes white dragon? Then he ripped it in half these, like it was high nothing. School kids don't care. I don't think... High school kids don't care. Bruh, I was like, they're harder in this Yu-Gi-Oh than Detroit is. This is the craziest <laughs> shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and at this point, I'm just, I'm just enamored with this game. And then Kaiba, so, so think about the hype that they just put into you. They, they just instill all this hype into you. They tell you it's the rarest, most powerful card of all time. There's, it's one of a kind. Nobody has this. Kaiba gets beats up grandpa. It's so rare. Kaiba will break the law and assault a man for it. Okay? That's how rare it is. He doesn't give a fuck about the legal money, ramifications. He, he can play around the legal system. But that's but but he's got the but he's got the bread to spend the money and go through the trouble. Is it's it's enough trouble for him to do it. Then he does it, gets it, rips it, duels, because he's like, yeah, fight me with my grandpa's deck. Now I'm looking like your grandpa just got clapped. How are you gonna win with the same deck? Like it doesn't make sense to me. Like, you, like, like, sure you could be a better player, but it's the same cards. And he goes, it, it may be the same cards, but it's the heart of the cards that truly matters. And when, and honestly, when he said that, like, you know how anime, they, did you know how in anime they do that like negative color thing and it splits the person in half because they just had like a paradigm shift. It yeah. just just changed their life forever. When he said harder cards, it was, I, was like, I was like, oh, like like I had that moment. And I was like, what does that mean? I was like all trying to figure it out. Then Kaiba summons three blue eyes on him. I was like, okay, 
So if it's the most powerful card ever and people are willing to beat people up for it, I mean, how can Yugi win? And when Yugi played Exodia and obliterated Kaiba, I fell out of my seat. And that's when I was hooked on fucking Yu-Gi-Oh. So what happened is one day my mom, uh, we caught the bus and we went to media play and media play. You know, it's like Toys R Us. They're both in hell burning together. And, uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and <laughs> so yeah so so media play rip media play i they the, the guy was putting stock up he was putting the Yu-Gi-Oh packs up and i went in there and i at, and i didn't at the first i didn't know that Yu-Gi-Oh wasn't mainstream i thought everybody knew what Yu-Gi-Oh was so when i went in and asked the cashier and the cashier couldn't have been no older than 18 but I'm a kid. I'm like, do you guys have Yu-Gi-Oh? He's like, oh, like you a hoe? <laughs> <laughs> like he thought he was just fucking Dave Chappelle. Like he thought he was fucking Kevin Hart out here. He thought he was actually making pure comedy. Comedy with a K. Comedy. Yeah, he was out here doing comedy stonks. Like he was out here mean man in fucking the year 2000. He was mean man. And he's a man beyond time. This dude just basically hold my life. And I was feeling so bad. I felt so defeated. And as I was walking around the media play with my head hanging low, I saw a brown box on the ground and it was full of Yu-Gi-Oh! original starter decks. All of them was Yu-Gi. But inside of the Yu-Gi ones, there was there was one, just one blue eyes, white dragon, Seto Kaiba starter deck. And I grabbed it, and I was, oh my God, it's the Blue Eyes White Dragon. It's the most powerful card of all time. I can't let anybody see me with this. And I begged and pleaded for my mom to buy it for me. I, I begged her more than I begged her for anything in my whole life, and she actually bought it. She normally never would buy, buy it when I begged, but I begged so hard, and she bought it. And when I bought it, I showed up like said okay to my neighborhood. I was like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was just tripping with this fucking blue eyes. And I was like, I was like in Kaiba on the anime, the fucking fool. Who plays a blue eyes without this? Lord of D. I was just <laughs> I was tripping. I was tripping. But then I found out that it wasn't even fucking rare or nothing. But that was my first Yu-Gi-Oh! experience man that shit was just it had me it had me like on a on a million and when they summon you remember five god dragon oh five headed dragon yeah five headed dragon when the big five summoned five headed dragon on yugi and kaiba when they were locked in the digital world guess what was happening to me what? My mom was telling me to get in the car because we had to go somewhere. And I was like, please let me finish watching it. I have to know what happens. I was, I was like, how do they defeat it? I was like, if, I was like if, they, if I don't watch the anime, I won't know how to defeat it if it ever shows up in my duels. Like, that's literally what I was thinking. I was so distraught that I didn't know how they killed Five God Dragon. Then I found out. They're like, bro, did you see it? I'm like, no. They're like, Kaiba's dead. I'm like, no. Like, I screwed. <laughs> <laughs> I was tripping, dog. I was tripping. When Kaiba, when Kaiba was put on the cross like Jesus and the witty Phantom was taunting him, I was like, Kaiba is the greatest. I'm like, this man dueled for your sins. Like, <laughs> Like I, I don't know. I fucking love Kaiba. I, like, I, of course, I loved Yugi and how he would always pull one out of his ass. But I love Kaiba because Kaiba was like, "I'm the best, and I'm gonna prove I'm the best." But goddamn it, I keep losing this asshole, and <laughs> he just he just can't beat him for some reason. But it was just it just was crazy. I just I just I don't know. I just got so involved in that shit, and then like you know, it happened to turn into something, and it's like. Who knew? Like, you know what I'm saying? Could have been anything. Yeah, for real. I promise I won't activate my collab card on you when we talk next time. <laughs> Dude, that's fine. Dude, this conversation was absolutely amazing. And honestly, this podcast, once you figure out how to edit this mess, it's going to be a fantastic piece of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links history. And I feel like for the people that really do care about both of our channels are going to absolutely love hearing a conversation like this. Oh, between yeah. Both of us. And I hope that this opens up an opportunity for you to reach out to other content creators for doing podcasts and stuff. Because I feel like 
it would be a better way for us to be even more connected than we already are because i feel like that's yeah. one thing we're missing in this community is the fact that there's not that much collapse going and we all know each other but we actually haven't like collabed with each other i think this is a yeah. great way to get the ball rolling and stuff so. outside of a duel actually because yes 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 Cause, cause I, cause I, what, what I really want to do is break the Wikipedia chain. That's what I want to do. I want people to value Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelings in the community and value the content the creators. Actual content creator yes. itself. Yes. Yes. That's that's what my that's what my goal is, and that's what my focus has become now. Like that's like my 2020 goal to bring like true value to the community. Before I was thinking, you know, I want to bring epic content to the community, but. I don't think this is a time for epic content. I think this is a time to uh, connect. I don't. I, yeah, like you said, get us all connected. Make a make a Dude, web. You want to hear what'd be cool? You want to hear what'd be cool if we find hmm. like a Yu-Gi-Oh game that we both like and do like and do like a co-op project on that. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. I was also thinking about a like another thing, like when we collab, like content creators would collab. And it would be like a like it's a shadow game, but it's not a Yu-Gi-Oh duel. It's a game of my choosing or your choosing. And it'd be like we got to play Uno, <laughs> or it's Dude, like Uno or some random. These YouTubers would be so yes. hype, bro. Cause it's not that hard. There's Uno on Steam. Yes, that would yes, be hype. yes. That's oh yes. God. Dude, actually, do we gotta get like. I, dude, we actually. I it could we, be the ultimate collab. Good. How many players because can you do on Uno? Because yeah, with Uno, I think it's a maximum of four people, anyways. So yeah. I don't think getting four people would be impossible. Oh no, I think I think if you got four people and it was like so so what I would what I think is you get four people from the Yu-Gi-Oh community in general, and you maybe have a TCG player, maybe you have someone who is one of those more talking head uh, type of you uh, YouTubers. Then you grab a Duel Links guy. And then all of y'all go at it and play Uno. Like, that's yeah. just, like, that, that would, would be, be like, it's got four different perspectives, but all the perspectives is still Yu-Gi-Oh. I think that'd be pretty awesome. That would actually be hype. Dude, honestly, I think we probably could do something like that. Yeah. I just don't know. I just don't, I don't have any connections to, like, any TCG people, but I feel, I, I don't know. If well, when I, well, when I go to this, when I go to this event, guys. honestly, that's true. That's true. It's gonna be some Yu-Gi-Oh people there, and I and the crazy thing is, I actually meeting Team APS is gonna be amazing. Oh. I, I it like well, if Team APS is there, I hope they're there. But meeting Team APS is gonna be amazing. It's like you know, it's crazy. Like it's it's crazy. Like, dude, me, dude, I mean, like yeah, dude. You're gonna do a great job in networking with people. Yeah, that's like one thing I'm bummed about about too. Is like that's a missed opportunity to one dude. Now, now thinking about it, I would have loved to meet like meet up with you in real life. Yes absolutely amazing and honestly i i definitely feel like it still can happen in 2020 oh From yeah for sure I'm noticing with konami is doing i do i hope that they do more events and stuff like this because i would love to just meet up with some of you guys i think yes. 2020 is the year for meeting up with each other and i'm so and glad that they've like finally started to embrace and acknowledge the community they aren't listening to all the they're not listening to all that bullshit but, but they are a better push for yes them. but they are making better pushes they are coming out to uh show effort you know they are they are helping to uh maintain the health of the game you know they're they're doing like quality checks often you know like some decks can be annoying like mystic mind for example but mystic mind isn't so broken that it needs to be completely and totally outright banned and they have some people that are at the wheel that are actually well it seems like that are actually you know monitoring the actual health and quality of the metagame and i really do like that and also i like how konami is dropping little little nuggets of like really powerful cards and combos that like the right player has to discover it and I, and that's like the magic of Yu-Gi-Oh just being like oh it man really i found the ultimate dark resignator combo and because i'm the first I'm about to clap everybody at the locals today <laughs> and nobody's ready for it. Like, that's what I love oh, about you. Yo. Dude, but yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm looking for like, for me, there's going to be a lot of ups and downs for 2020, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what's going to happen in 2020. Also, like be also we should do this too. We should do this too. As Yu-Gi-Oh, like for that idea that we were talking about, like having multiple people come together and do a thing like Uno, not just Uno, we should do, YouTube gaming relevant trending games that are multiplayer. Okay. 
and we should all do it together. Like all the Duel Links people or TCG people come together and play fucking Fortnite if that was like the thing. You know what I'm saying? Like we all, so that we can cash in on the algorithmic boost that those trends give because like for example like for example some shit like five night at freddy's you know and nobody in my channel want to watch fucking five night at freddy's but when five night at freddy's content was getting like three million views a hit man i would have been over here you know <laughs> yikes it's a freddy bear I'm like you know like i don't know <laughs> For three million views, I'd get spooked by Fred Bear. What the fuck? <laughs> like, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm about to be like Matt Bad. I'm about to be out here making my career, making theories about uh fucking Chuck E. Cheese. Like, it's crazy. Like, so I feel like we always miss out on that. Like right now, Tim Tim. Like like right now you're doing Pokemon. I, a little bit of it. I kinda a little I kinda bit feel of it. like Tim Tim is crushing it right now. Like I, I do follow a lot of gaming YouTubers just to see what they upload. And Tim Tim is through my feed like every day, all day, and people are loving watching it. And then everybody's making that bullshit ominous content. Tim Tim, the Pokemon killer. And I'm like, oh my yes, fucking god. Sir. I'm like, bruh. Yeah, it's not. It is just. It's I'm like, but I'm like, but that clickbait is too strong. Like, I can feel that clickbait. Yeah, I forgot. Because I remember I like, uh, I think I titled my stream like. People, yeah, people claim Temtem is the Pokemon killer. Let's find out. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think Temtem's a Pokemon killer. I don't it's think not, I don't think anything's is, is uh, anything that killer. We have more MMR or like not MMRPGs, but it's cool that we have like more monster capture. No, um, all Pokemon has to do is look at Temtem and say, "Ooh, those are nice ideas." Copy paste, be yeah. gone. <laughs> And Tim Tim is destroyed instantly, just like that. And Tim Tim's like, "Hey, you copied us." They're like, "You said one more thing." And I'm a yeah. fucking Sue. <laughs> They're like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Nintendo ninjas or something else. I don't yeah, know. them. Yeah, them the ninjas be out here. Like, I mean, you you know, because when I saw Tim Tim, I said, like, oh, you trying to get clapped, huh? Oh, like, you <laughs> like you out here putting in your description? We are a Pokemon clone. Oh, you trying to get you trying to get nuked, right? And Nintendo hasn't said anything about it. That means them ninjas is going to work. They're building their they're building that legal case, and I and, and mark my words, you know, it's, it's not gonna go to that like final stage and launch. They're gonna be like, "We are so sorry, we apologize," <laughs> and they're gonna get up to the YouTube thing and adjust the camera, get in the face, <sighs> guys. <laughs> we got caught. <laughs> they clapped us and they took they our ad us. revenue. All right, man. I'm out of here, man. Good night. You have a good night, good night. man. Have a good one, man. <laughs> you too.